And welcome back to U Regina 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. Uh, possibly one of two logical fallacies. Uh, some people will uh, say that the naturalistic fallacy and the is ought fallacy are the same. Some will say that they're different. I really don't care. Uh, what we're going to be discussing is the word is. Uh, and good luck finding discussions about this word on Google. Uh, it is, is something which has a lot of uh, collisions with other kinds of content. Uh, you will find this very difficult to search for. Uh, and so the problem we're, we're going to talk about today, uh, lots of people make it. Almost, maybe even everyone makes this mistake. Uh, and so how this mistake is going to work uh, it's going to be the difference between saying that something is the case and something should be the case, or something ought to be the case. Uh, here's a quote from seekfind.net, which I think is actually quite uh, enlightening in this particular context. Quote, the is ought to be true, so it is fallacy occurs when an arbitrary assumption is made about what ought to be true, and this assumption is used to reason that it is true. This is a form of circular reasoning, since the ought of is the proof of the is. And that's kind of hard to say, uh, so let, let's kind of unwrap this a little bit. Uh, that there is this difference between saying you should do this and this is done. There are two types of things, two kinds of things that you could say. They're very different and they're important to keep separate. And you cannot justify the things that you should do purely based on the things that you could do or that are happening. There is a guy that I found, and I wish I could find the guy, again, this is impossible to search for, uh, who I found in about 2002 or 2003, who made the claim that is is the most insidious word in the English language. And it's mostly because of this issue, that there's this huge... Um, kind of gap whenever we start using this word uh, that prevents us from seeing clearly the difference between these two types of things. How do you even say this in English, though? And how do you express that this is the case in English? It's hard. And the motivation of this video is actually, of all things, a question that you will find if you go to OkCupid, the dating site, uh, which if you're single, by the way, you should really be on the site. Um, the question is, does everything happen for a reason? And so you can, again, unpack this a little bit. And what does it look like? It looks like you're saying that there is, again, uh, a lot of things that happen. There's a world of, there are a lot of kind of point particles moving around according to physical law, or if you're a theist, maybe there's this god that you know controls everything that's moving around. Whatever happens, there is a, a universe of discourse, and there are, are, are ways of understanding the ways that it works. And on on one level, I guess you could you could look at it and say, well, because every particle obeys some law, you know, the, the movement and existence of that particle, uh, there has to be a reason why it's moving a certain way, it is in a certain place, etc. But when we start talking about everything, the, the concept of everything becomes larger than that, and it starts to envelop things that are by themselves contradictory when considered with everything else. And so it's kind of dangerous to do so. Uh, it's This is related to, and I encourage you to go watch the dimensional analysis video, because when we start talking about different types of things, we have to be very careful that, again, we, we balance our types. We, we, we make statements that are consistent only with the type of things that we're discussing. And since the is and the should types of things are different, you will find very quickly when you build arguments that you will have a should on one line and an is on the following one, or vice versa. And that is, of course, when you will notice that because of dimensional analysis, you're, you have made a mistake somewhere. And this mistake is insurmountable. Uh, David Hume is a philosopher uh, who wrote a, of, of other things or among other things, uh, quote, a treatise of human nature, unquote. 
um, go check this out. If you're following along this video series, go read it. It's not that long, and it is actually kind of a good read. Um, writers are in this, he'll, he'll, he'll claim that, you know, people will, will make this, this is hot uh, mistake, and will, 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 will try to convince you that uh, they're, they're not making the mistake, when in fact they are. And writers, by almost part of their trade, uh, are going to, a lot of the times, make a claim of things that we ought to do, things we should believe, things we uh, might be good for our interests to, to partake in. Uh, and almost entirely, they justify it in, based on what is and the, the conditions of the world, etc. It's worth pointing out that when we say ought, that ought can exist on multiple levels and often does. Uh, are we doing something in order to accomplish some goal? Are we? Do we ought to do something because it's socially acceptable for reasons relating to money and economics? Maybe for your love or for... Uh, uh, well, I can't even pronounce it anymore. It's been so long. Uh, um, chivalry. Yeah. Uh, maybe for your God uh, or for your religion system or, you know, because it says that you should do it. Uh, is it purely for the lulls? Is that why you're doing it? Uh, is it because your job depends on it? Is it so that you can, quote, do the evolution, baby, unquote? Um, is it because of the law of the land? Is it so that you can abide by your word and be a man of your word? Or is it just purely on your gut belief that you ought to do something? There are examples of all of these things. And sometimes you have different oughts uh, kind of conflicting with each other. And so it's, it's very easy to get into a situation, especially when you have multiple people, like large numbers of people, maybe billions of people, uh, who all have different... Uh, kind of focuses uh, and all have different perspectives uh, deciding what ought to happen, ought to be acted on, ought to be done. And there are going to be people who have different value systems and who prefer one value or another in any particular context. And this is all without even getting into what is. This is purely just in the, the, the realm of ought. So when we start talking about what is in that context, uh, then there starts to be no consensus uh, uh, among what it is that we should do. Uh, in addition to th that, there's no consensus about what distinguishes a moral ought from a non-moral ought, from one kind of ought and another. In many cases, it's a very blurry and fuzzy line. There's no consensus about what the best moral principles are. So even if you can get to the point where you you convinced yourself that you ought to do something on a moral level or an ethical level, uh, there's no consensus that you're making the right decision even once you do so. And even if there was a consensus, you should be really skeptical of it based on the other nonsense that most of the world believes, purely based on the bandwagon argument alone, uh, it should be dubious. And so there, there's this problem because we have all these views of what should be. Uh, and a lot of views on what is, in fact, uh, and th this problem between the two. And what makes this even worse is sometimes it's really, really hard to see where the is-ought switch happens. When we start getting into mod uh, not modular, uh, modal reasoning uh, and symbolic reasoning that employs modal reasoning, it gets really, really subtle sometimes to see where the switch is happening. It's worth pointing out another two words that might be worth knowing here. And those two words are normative and positive. What the word positive means in this context is to say that something is. To say that this is how, for example, the economic system works. This is how the laws of physics work. Here is the, the constant in our equation. Here is the equation that governs how things are. Anything that is concerned with describing how things work 
is a positive claim or a positive way of looking at things. What normative is is the ought part, the ought thing that corresponds with positive belief. Normative belief is things that you feel should be acted on, actions that should be taken, people that should do certain things, that sort of thing. In the science of economics, they have a hard time with this particular problem, and they teach you very early on to tell the difference between positive economics, I, the economics that describe how, or the science of how economics actually works, versus normative claims and normative things in economics, where economists are called to make calls, or, or, or are called to make decisions, and are called to describe how the economy should function. This is equally true of uh, all other sciences and all other areas of human behavior and action, but uh, some areas it's harder to see than others. If we, for whatever reason, did not accept that there is no connection or no way to bridge the gap between is and ought, we would accept the status quo purely on its own, uh, on its own sake, or for its own sake, or for its own sake. Uh, and as we discussed in the last video, there are things wrong with the status quo. And we should not necessarily accept the status quo as it is uh, without a fight, without acting on it. Um, we should recognize that there are problems and then work to resolve those problems. And sometimes this is going to look just like a semantic problem. It's, it's just a word problem. You know, we, we use the word is and, you know, if we use it correctly, we won't have this problem. You know, it, or, or we use the word ought, and if we use it correctly, we won't have this problem. So we could say something like, for example, a triangle ought to have three sides. And when you say it that way, it's probably true. Well, it is true. It is true. But uh, the, the problem is not a little bit deeper than that. It is a real problem if you actually engage in moral discussions it comes up almost immediately. And so merely viewing it as a word problem is going to do disservice to the complexity of resolving it. Uh, it's going to do a disservice for the complexity of moral reasoning and the, the, the difficulty of actually deciding what ought and even possibly what is. And we should not... Uh, and, and when, when we, we say that there's this problem between is and ought, and discussions where you start with is and you go to ought and vice versa, this is not saying that you should not try to say what ought. That is, you, you, you shouldn't take from this the conclusion that you should just give up in making decisions, and that you should just give up choosing what actions to take, because you have important decisions to make. You have important actions to make. You can do things that are incredibly valuable, and you can make decisions and decide what ought, uh, and make your. You can become a hero. You can you can change the world with your hands. I'm not saying you should do this, but you can, and this is something that you can think about doing. But it is going to be difficult for you to do so because of this problem. You will of course decide whether or not you'll shy away from this difficulty, but it's worth thinking about at least. And also worth pointing out, as with the last video, there is an is-ought situation involving the is-ought situation. I don't really know what to do about that. Uh, it might be worth thinking about um, what is, the, or what should we do about the is-ought situation? Uh, because that, of course, would assume that there is uh, kind of this relationship between is and ought, and of course there is none. What are some examples of this?
you could have something like, women have historically been childbearers and responsible for only children, uh, or for children, and o only women are, have this responsibility. Therefore, women should be responsible for children and only children. Of course, what we can do, as we did in the dimensional analysis video, replace the, the some part of the, the value here. The, the who is X? X is the, the claim women are responsible for children, or kind of swapping out the R for a symbolic uh, representation of that statement. And then you have the type of statement. Have X, therefore should X. You have this, this uh, transition between a have statement and a should statement without a middle point that describes how the have goes to the should, how you transfer yourself from a situation where this is true to a place where this should be true. This is where the danger comes from. And so, of course, there, there are reasons we could believe, uh, there are contexts we could come up with where it may make sense for women to have a broader role in society than purely bearing children in Western democracies uh, across the world, even. Uh, women have the right to work, they have the right to vote, they have the right to participate in societies because it is viewed as the right thing to do, because we, we, we should, as we should, allow them to do so, again, as if we had any say in the matter at all. What are some other examples? So we can have, instead of the you know, women being bare for foot and pregnant uh, being our, our thing that we're discussing, we could say torturing a puppy is that thing. So let's say someone is torturing a puppy. Therefore, they should not be torturing that puppy. Again, you're going from is to a should. In this case, a should not. Now, of course, you shouldn't torture puppies. That's a horrible thing to do. That, that, that's, that's like one of the lowest things you could possibly do. And if I ever catch you doing that, uh, well, I, I can't even say what I do because, unfortunately, in this country it's not legal to say such things due to Bill C-51. But uh, it, there, there is this uh, situation where even if the conclusion is true, the argument is invalid because it goes from an is to an ought. It is to a should. An is to a should not. What's another example of this? The the idea uh, which you will probably encounter, or, or, or it's, it's entirely possible to, to encounter this, where uh, you, you, can, you can make the argument that people are human beings as a species uh, generally have sex. They, all of your ancestors, whoever you are watching this video, have had sex. It is part of how evolution works. It is a necessary reason or a necessary cause for you being present in listening to this video. Therefore, the argument could could go that you know you the the you know beautiful woman watching this should have sex with me specifically. Uh, again, there's a, a is ought problem here because there is a difference between what is and has happened and what should happen. There's a missing reason that the should that would justify the should in that particular argument, and that would be of course arguing from ignorance since that reason is missing, you are the, the should is an ignorant should. And again, argument from ignorance video, go watch it. Now, again, I, I, I've mentioned that this can be subtle. So you could have an argument such as
So you can have, say, Cyril, the philosopher, doesn't understand the is ought problem. Therefore, Cyril can kiss my ass. Now, it's actually true, this part, uh, I, at least I think it's true, that he logically can. However, when we say this, we usually mean that, you know, it's an ought. He should kiss my ass. He should, you know, do something that I tell him to that he wouldn't want to do because he is wrong, as a, you know, penance for being wrong. And so, again, it, it's just to show that this the should part here can sometimes look like it is, because it is true that he can kiss my ass, in, in, in fact. Uh, but, again, just be on the watch out for people who try to kind of pass a quick one on you and uh, make themselves look as though uh, you should do something uh, when they do not have enough justification to do so. So in summary, again, don't despair too much about this problem. You're going to have to make decisions. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you should make decisions. You should have actions that you choose to do. Uh, what actions, those are going to be up to you, uh, including the choice of whether or not to listen to me at all. Uh, but don't let yourself be thrown off by people who try to claim what is, therefore what ought. As usual, uh, if you have any questions or would like to see more examples or would like to you know, kiss my ass, uh, feel free to uh, comment anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, we'll have a Bitcoin donation address available in case you're curious about giving us uh, some Bitcoin so we can get whiteboard markers which uh, are in short supply. And uh, as usual, we'll see you on the next video.